I think that's why we need Lisa's accounting system. And <laughs> And we, and we need to uh, publish every year in every newspaper in Europe uh, what the changes were. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we, we're getting every night, uh, we get like what the stock market does. And I get that, the, the, you know. And I'm like, why do I need to hear what the stock market does and not what biodiversity does or water retention? Yeah, and, and I'm not interested in the stock market and what kind of people play for, I'm more interested in the real value of the world. So I think it's the communication of the values into the public, you know, into the, the newspapers and the radios and, and so that politician can actually say, while I was in, in office <coughs> last year, I am actually saw that going from, from five to 10, or <coughs> I'm gonna work on, you know, s so that's, that's the kind of, and that's sort of why I was kind of disappointed while we're still in um, experimental mode and why we cannot sort of <laughs> move this along. But you have seen that our vision is the, regula uh, the, the regular production. I mean, because we know that's, that's what we need to do. I mean, that's what we're doing with environmental accounts and that's what's going to happen to ecosystem accounts as well. But our experience with... Um, um, developing the environmental account system showed us it took us 20 years, you know, to come from this very beginning research phase to like a regular production. It needs time and it will take some more time for ecosystem accounts as well. <coughs> the World Bank is also very active in this field. So. Yeah. Do we have questions from, from the audience, huh? huh? You need to deserve your, your cocktail, huh? Well, while, while listening uh, to, to this discussion, so what um, crosses my mind also is we haven't been talking so much about how to, to take uh, the people with us in all these modeling processes. Uh, so are we also, should we also go more for collaborative modeling approaches, participatory approaches, where people can actually decide these values? We have an example in Portugal where the evaluation was done by a community of persons that uh, was working in the place and was living there. And so it was not a monetary evaluation, but they evaluated uh, um, in a participatory process. And um, I think this is possible when you are dealing with small communities or when you are um, acting at, as a muni uh, at a municipal level. But if you are at a, a national level or regional level, it's much complicated to involve persons in a participatory process. I think you raise a very important uh, question. An economist would say, if people don't uh, comply with the rules, then you should punish them. Well, this is nonsense. We have now behavioral economics, and we know that people don't behave like homo economicus. In the Netherlands, there are several experiments where um, local farmers are getting a reward if they preserve nature in their own uh, area. And uh, it seems that uh, this is working, working well. So you have to make a, a very smart proposal. Don't offer too much, but don't offer uh, too, too low either. And uh, from the insights of behavioral economics, uh, we, we can learn a lot. Okay. I, I, I would like to ask another question, coming back to the... Because I, I from your presentation and discussion, for me it's clear that we are facing a l lack of data. Huh? We are al always coming from data, data from mapping, data also for the evaluation, data and the information to policymakers. So uh, <coughs> how far um, digitalization, new technologies can, uh, can support and can be also a risk to, this, to, to, to face this problem? Because we, think we can think at, for example, Internet of Ecosystem, getting data from, from, from also People, so I was yesterday in a meeting and there was a discussion about yeah how we can get data from Twitter, from people uh, going to recreational areas and, and, and expressing their, their, their opinion, their, their appreciation of what has been proved, for example. So how far this can support, but can also be a risk for, for, for what we are talking about.
I tell you, the like uh, I started this work in, in 1993 or something, and between then and now, the amount of data were, you know, it's like, are we any closer to answering these questions from 1993? Like, how good is, you know, how good does the data really need to be before we can actually have the, uh, I think it's just a matter of do it what you have right now. Make the, you know, the decisions are being made now, not by the time we're gonna have the data. So make the decisions now of on the best you can do and find where you, you know, visit the accounting print set maybe once every 10 years, see how we can do better. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there is time to wait. Yeah. I, I think they would have liked to have more detailed information for all the cases. But uh, very often, for example, for agricultural production, we just have one figure at the, country, at the national level. So, I mean, how do you differentiate then the benefits? I mean, it, it's not possible. So, I mean, this is partly, let's say, information as it is communicated because this information certainly in the national registers is much more detailed. I mean, we have information about the income of each, ev each and every farm, but this information is not accessible. So we, I think there's a lot of information there, but then the first question is not only does it exist, but how accessible is it? And I think that that's one of the problems. And I, I very much agree with the role on the fact we, if we wait until we have the perfect data it will be too late. <laughs> so uh, we can always refine a decision on better data, but uh, we have to take a decision at a certain moment. And if that d moment is now, <coughs> and we have a certain level of information now, we should do it. And uh, as I said, and also as Perin was saying, I mean, this Flickr data, it's, it's, it's <coughs> an information source, but it's biased in itself. But maybe it's the best one we have, because for the visitation, of the Luxembourgish recreation infrastructure, there is nothing. There is no counter on the bike path is how many people are, are biking there on the weekends or hiking in the Müllertal or whatever. It's not there, it doesn't exist. So we, we use some proxy information, we use the best we can, but the perfect data might be far away. I think um, we never had so many information. And the question is, what about the usefulness of this information? Because there is plenty of information which, near which is really disinformation, because it has no meaning. So I think, I think we, m we must give the importance that the, this kind of information we have we, we must give them the value that it has. And uh, some people think that it is only the only mean to support decision. It is not. I think, for example, the social issues are not easy to put in a map because there are so many variables that uh, they are really difficult to work on and, and really they are the, 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 the reason for us to to make most of the decisions. So I think, for example, one scope with which the information is very good for us, it's to evaluate. When, for example, I, I'm, I don't want to be putting something before, but tomorrow we are going to speak about meta urban metabolism. This is something which is really important. This is something which can be for anybody a target. If you see how the evolution has been, you can target what you wish. And with these scopes, with these perspectives about how it worked and how it works now, this picture of the history of the m urban metabolism, it's really, really important for you to evaluate and to make decisions. And I think another thing which is uh, very important is that many of the decisioners want to support their decisions in this information and they have forgotten all the important information they, they had before. 
most of the people are are forgetting their culture because they they really believe that the information which is supplied by internet for example it's enough and so this is a problem so i i think that we should put a big filter on the information we have sometimes the information is a little bit mindset uh, and so it's not that important the basics and by just looking like coming from a very statistical point of view what what are our criteria we want from data or we need or like we need from data to actually being able to uh, produce ecosystem accounts regularly so we need um, more than one data point we need data to be comparable over time and also geographically we need a spatial resolution which is fine enough to actually give signals i mean these are all criteria we need for a regular production and, and that's something we need to keep in mind as well i mean these one uh, one and off exercises of collecting data in some areas is really nice but if we really want to show progress over time we need like the same methodologies applied over time to actually really show signals. I mean, yeah, just to very statistical point of view. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, are there questions? Yeah. Yes. So because, uh, well, I'm also interested in valuing, but other kind of ecosystems, actually more commercial services, and uh, we are still understanding how that thing works. And the concept of value is, is very tricky. So it's multidimensional. It has uh, quantitative and qualitative values. And we are struggling a lot with the qualitative value. So coming back to your comments, so then uh, do you see any room for including qualitative values in? Uh Good question. Because you are, I think like yes. you are going to only focus on no, 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 we are not focusing on any value at the moment and there is a really big movement also from the UN and even within CEA, EEA to, to work on plural values. That's something which is explored right now and I don't know but um, if you know but there will be a conference hosted by the UN and um, a German ministry in uh, Bonn uh, 24 to 26 of April and that's where we're exactly going to look into these kind of uh, discussions exactly. We're going to be present there as well, Eurostat and um, also like other Kip Inka partners actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you should actually come if you're interested in these kind of questions. Yeah. Yes. I would like to, to do a comment about the thing of the data. Um, when when I was commenting before about recreation, it's not because I think it's BS because of the of what you value. It's because it's BS because of what you are not valuing there. And I think this could create problems and could create partial data, could create bad decisions because then what is not value seems that doesn't doesn't appear there. Therefore, you can transform it. So if there is an area of a park or there is a little park that doesn't have so many Twitters or so many information from social media. It seems that it's not relevant and you can transform it, you can reurbanize, you can lose it. And I think this is dangerous when you, you do things that are BS that, and you don't check how BS they are. Even if you say, we don't have better data. So maybe if you don't have data that is not BS, you, you shouldn't value or you should say, okay, you should take another type of analysis to consider that maybe this is not the best decision or maybe the best output of for an assessment. Part of the work was a feasibility study to see what is actually there. Where do we have data and where do we have data gaps? So, uh, I mean, it was simply also to illustrate that if you would like to have information about recreation in that case, try to find better data at national level. Because if otherwise you only have Flickr as an alternative, as a proxy, it's exactly what you say. So we, we have a lot of question marks behind it, but it was also to illustrate what is the problem and where the problem lies. So to make aware to the people that if, you want, if they want to know about the use of recreation, think about how to, how to record that at, at national level or whatever. And, uh, and that was a bit the idea to, to trigger that kind of reflection. We know the data is not perfect. And that is a bias. Yeah, for me the problem was like if you apply it to how to like invest, when you are saying invest is reliable, no, everyone is using it. So rely on how we are calculating recreation. You are, so sorry, but invest 
for regional level, okay, they could work for urban level, they are applying, that's why I was asking, the same type of algorithm, the same, the same type of calculation, but you are not putting a note, this is not reliable for taking your decisions. So this is what I was thinking, okay, we are doing it for Luxembourg, you are explaining in your report, but you are not explaining this when you are doing assessment with INVEST, and I think then you shouldn't put this into INVEST. You shouldn't put this in that powerful software without a note. Be aware, this is not reliable. And I'm sorry to, to say this, <laughs> Len, I, 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 when I was working in, in consultancy, I see these people saying, ah, oh, but this river doesn't have any value. So, excuse me, it's a shock stream in the middle of the east of England. Of course, it has a value. There is only 1% of this type of ecosystems in the world. And oh, but, but no one is using it. Ma, excuse me, like, we, we don't have, we, we test it with these models mm -hmm. and nothing appears. This, this model is not made for that river. You, 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 that, this is the thing, like, later people have this information and no one goes back what is there, how is value, it's parcel, it's <coughs> not, it's robust. And then, if you do it for a local valuation, it's okay, but when you do it for a wall spread model, I think it's very dangerous. Mm. Better don't use the model. Mm. I think that's that's the usual risk of uh, communicating things to results to policymakers. It also comes from the question of the economic approach, which sometimes doesn't internate all the costs. And the question is, when we are talking about life cycle analysis, for example, we try to have as much as inf information as we can. For example, if you are looking at an industry, you, you have a, a final product, but you try to find other final products in order to have other inputs. But if you are talking about an approach to an economy, do you, th do you internalize all the costs, all the environmental costs? Of course, it's impossible. So what we, pre wh what we should have uh, uh, would be to have more and more information that could be compiled and that could be adding value to the information you have coming from the accountancy. And, uh, and so this is, uh, you, can, you can have it in money, you can have it in uh, another unit. But you, you, you must have it, because you don't, if you don't have it, you are going to lose some information which is really important for decision making, which is not economic, which is not money. It's economic, but not money, not financial. Thank you very much. So I would like to thank all our panel members, speakers as well, the speakers of today, and you all for your active participation. And now it's time for a nice cocktail and to continue the discussion, I'll say thank you.